Coney Island Stillwell Avenue Station is a terminus hub that brings together most of the subway lines that run through Lower Brooklyn. Each of these trains, the D, F, and in Q, runs south to here with each taking a distinct route. However, they were once part of separate railroad companies, meaning that there was once a period in time in which they had separate stations at Coney Island before they were all consolidated into one. This is that story. The first of any railroad transportation to Coney Island didn't actually start with steam trains. It was the Coney Island and Brooklyn Railroad Company, which operated horse-pulled cars to the island since 1862. In 1864, the Brooklyn, Bath, and Coney Island Railroad extended their steam train service to the island, where its station would be in the exact spot of where the modern hub station is today. The railroad started at 36th Street in Sunset Park, and ran on what eventually became the West End Line of the D-Train. During the 1910s, a new elevated railroad terminal would be built for the West End Line, which is the station that we all know today. On December 23, 1918, the line was officially opened to the new platforms alongside the Sea Beach Line, which had already been there for over a year. Speaking of the Sea Beach Line, let's talk about that next. It was organized as the New York and Sea Beach Railroad on September 25, 1876 as a steam railroad. It started at Bath Junction with the West End Line and the Bay Ridge Branch, where it ran down to Coney Island. It would eventually begin service on July 17, 1879, at around the same time that the Sea Beach Palace opened, which the railroad served. As you can already guess, this station was independent from the West End Terminal, about 750 feet to the east. However, in 1907, tracks were constructed to connect the New York and Sea Beach Railroad to the West End Terminal. Then, on September 5, 1917, the platforms for the Sea Beach opened at the new Coney Island Stillo Avenue Terminal. Of course, as I said earlier, the West End Line platforms would open just over a year later on December 23, 1918. This would mark the beginning of bringing together the various Lower Brooklyn Railroad lines and consolidating them into one unified train terminal in Coney Island. Meanwhile, there were two other railroads which were also expanding south towards the island. In 1875, the Prospect Park and Coney Island Railroad opened a terminal just north of Surf Avenue to act as a storage facility for trains and a passenger station. The Culver Depot, as it was known, was named after Andrew Culver, the president of the Prospect Park and Coney Island Railroad. So, you can probably guess what subway line this railroad would eventually become. Yes, it's the Culver Line of the F Train. In 1903, the Brooklyn, Flatbush, and Coney Island Railway was acquired by the Brooklyn Rapid Transit Company to extend from Brighton Beach Station to Coney Island. It would share the Culver Depot with the Prospect Park and Coney Island Railroad and the platforms there as well. In 1904, the terminal was renovated to expand passenger capacity and to create separate loading areas for elevated trains and streetcars. However, in 1919, the Brooklyn, Flatbush, and Coney Island Railway, or the Brighton Line as it came to be known as, left the Culver Depot when it was extended to the new Coney Island Terminal. It would also have a new intermediate station along the way at West A Street near the New York Aquarium. And at that station, it would have an upper level to facilitate express trains and a lower level to facilitate local trains. In order to get trains to the lower level, local trains would switch onto the side trackways to take them down to the lower level of West 8th Street New York Aquarium Station. However, when Culver Line trains were eventually extended to Coney Island Terminal on May 1st, 1920, they also utilized a station at West 8th Street, which meant that it would have to share it with the Brighton Line. The Culver would take over and use the lower level, meaning that the Brighton's trackways to that level would become redundant because the line would no longer be serving it. In 1954, they were abandoned and the tracks themselves were torn up. So, next time you're at West A Street New York Aquarium, head to the eastern end of the F train platforms on the lower level, and you can still see the two steel trackway frames that elevate to meet up with the Brighton Line at the upper level. Likewise, if you're on a B or Q train between West A Street and Ocean Parkway stations, you can see those same abandoned trackways as they descend to the lower level. As for the Clover Depot, it would continue to stay open to serve the South Brooklyn Railway. However, for that railway, I'm thinking of saving it for another video in the future. Unfortunately, the depot was raised by a fire in January of 1923, and a new one will be built by the Coney Island and Brooklyn Railroad adjacent to it. That railroad, by the way, was a streetcar system which is now the B68 bus route. Culver Line trains continued to use that depot until October 30th, 1956, when it became fully dependent on the Coney Island train yard to store their trains in its vicinity. Now, since the Coney Island and Brooklyn Railroad became a bus route, that meant that their streetcar depot would be transformed into a bus depot by the New York Transit Authority. However, it would be closed on July 27, 1960, and neither this terminal or the Culver Lines have any remains today. The site of where Culver Depot once stood was in this parking lot right next to West A Street New York Aquarium Station, and the site of where the Coney Island and Brooklyn Railroad's depot once stood is now where Brightwater's Towers Condominium is. 
Now, there was also yet another railroad that ran down to Coney Island, the Manhattan Beach branch of the New York and Manhattan Beach Railway. However, if you've seen my video on that branch, then you would know that it doesn't terminate at the Coney Island Terminal. Instead, it ends at the eastern end of the island at Manhattan Beach. This is because it was owned by the Long Island Railroad, and the other lines were owned by the Brooklyn Rapid Transit Company. Okay, let's continue on with the rest of the history of the Coney Island Stillwell Avenue Station. Following the extension of the Culver Line to the new terminal hub, the BRT's fare was cut down from $0.10 cents to $0.05. Cents. In 1923, the Brooklyn Rapid Transit Company became the Brooklyn Manhattan Transit Company, meaning that the lines were now under the control of that name. Then, in 1929, the Coney Island Terminal would have a new entrance, which would also include a few retail shops as well. During the 1980s, plans were drawn out to renovate the station, but it wasn't until the mid-1990s when the plans were finalized by the MTA. In 1999, they asked for $125 million to fund the project. Finally, in November of 2001, renovation officially began, which required the closure of the platforms. When the project started, the Sea Beach Line platforms closed, and the platforms for the Brighton and Culver Lines closed on September 8, 2002. The West End Line platforms would stay open during the entire renovation, so trains could keep serving the station. On May 23, 2004, the new terminal opened, with F and Q trains serving the respective platforms again. End trains began serving the station again on May 29, 2005. Okay, so now let's explore Coney Island Stillwell Avenue and see all of the clues to its history. At platform level, there are eight tracks with each subway line, each occupying two of them and one of the four island platforms. D and N trains come in from north of the station, while the F and Q trains come in south of the station on a curve. Looking up, you can see the huge solar panel roof which was constructed during the renovation. After walking down to a ramp to head to the mezzanine at a lower level, I spotted this electronic departure board which was added in May of 2010. Outside of the station, the main entrance still retains remnants of the company that once owned all four of the lines that serve the station, the Brooklyn Manhattan Transit. In fact, there are many stations throughout the New York City subway system which still have those same signs, so maybe I can make a video compilation about them someday, we'll see. Walking to the side of the terminal building, you can see here the signal tower for the station, which was here even before the renovation. Now, Coney Island Stowell Avenue is actually a quarter of a mile north from the boardwalk and Coney Island Beach itself. So, it's obvious that these stations that were built in Coney Island were meant to provide access to the shore. And so that's about it for today's video. This is actually one of the more interesting ones I've done, and not just because it's about the New York City subway, but also because it's a case of different railroad companies unifying together to become the transit system that we know today, and I think there's something cool with that. But anyways, my next video will be less about a certain location, but more about, well, let's say, an infrastructure plan. But it will still involve the New York City subway. So, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. I'll see you next time.